Oh man, I didn't get much sleep last night. I was having this bogus nightmare. I dreamt I was lying in bed in the dark when all of a sudden this bright blue light filled the room. And slowly my bedroom door began to open. And the next thing I remember, I was being dragged through a hallway. Then I was lying on a table and these scary aliens wanted to operate on me. And they had big mushroom heads and big red eyes and uh, weird, eh? Good job it was just a dream though. Wait a minute, uh, it feels like something shoved up my ass. Hold on, uh, guys, uh, I'm just asking for a friend, but is it normal to have a copy of the unruly South Park Game Boy game shoved up your ass? Just curious, uh, there's no other reason. Completely unrelated by the way, but look what I just found. The unruly South Park Game Boy game. How crazy is that? Well, let's check it out, eh? Hold on a minute, uh, I've still got a bit of poo on it. Uh, oh, there we go, I'm much better. So, the title screen, it looks pretty cute to be honest, and it's got the theme tune and everything, it's pretty good. So, the story, and Chef shows up and tells us about the world's most unlucky comet that just so happens to be passing over South Park at this exact moment in time. And I mean, he ain't kidding. This thing only shows up every 666 years, and it's currently a full moon, and a solar eclipse, and it's on Friday the 13th. That is one evil comet. The only thing that could make that any more evil is a Hitler moustache and uh, maybe some pedo glasses. Chef says the comet is called the Colossal Shubop Titan Behemoth 299, which is a bit of a coincidence because that's the name I gave to my uh, <coughs> uh, little Goomba. I gotta say though, it's kinda surreal seeing swearing in a Game Boy game. It has the F word in it and everything. And now they're talking about a teacher shoving a rat up their arse. Truly, if any game was deserving of Nintendo's seal of quality, this is it. This is for one. So, on to the first world, and we've got to rescue Kenny from a new kid who has been possessed by the spirits of, uh, Richard Nixon. Or Tricky Dicky, as a chef likes to say. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, Richard Nixon's ghost possessing someone is a pretty good way to start a game. Well, it's got my interest. The game then. And it's alright. It's a puzzle game in which you control each character, and you gotta use their unique abilities to solve the puzzles. For instance, Stan is the only one who can, uh, activate switches for some reason. Kyle has a bouncy hat which people can bounce off to reach higher ledges and Cartman can swim for some reason and uh, well he can be thrown into enemies to kill him with his fat ass which is probably the worst way to die. Heck I'd rate that even worse than having a heart attack whilst watching internet porn and that's pretty bad. I mean you don't even have time to close your window or delete your internet history or anything. And I'd still rate that above having a fat kid thrown into your face. But I'm not gonna lie, some of these levels are actually pretty clever. Take this one for example, you gotta flick the switch of Stan to activate the moving platform and then bounce Cartman off Kyle's head and then throw him across the gap to rescue Kenny. It's not too bad. But then you have levels like this, where you just gotta stop this UFO from killing the cows till the timer runs out. And man, it's so boring and slow and the game is obsessed with throwing these levels in your face. They make you do it again and 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 well oh that's it. It wasn't fun the first time, it's not gonna be fun the twelfth time. Although it might be fun the thirteenth time, so uh let's just slip one more in just in case. There we go. Nah, it is still not fun. First boss then, and it's uh, this guy, and I have no idea how to beat him. Well, maybe I have to throw Cartman at him. No, that didn't work. Well, actually, Chef says I've got to throw his balls back at him, but they just kill me. God damn it indeed. Ah oh, well, at least I get to witness these amusing dying scenes. Wait a minute, did he just say son of a bitch? Well, there goes my monetization, and I made the effort and everything not to curse or swear the entire video. Thanks for that Cartman, you fat bastard. Yeah, Josh ruined it for everyone. So, how do you beat him? Well, you gotta make the snowballs hit Kyle's hat, which breaks it apart, and then you can pick up the smaller ball as Stan and throw it at him. First with switches, and now throwing snowballs. Who knew that Stan's defining traits was, uh, having working hands? 
I'm not really sure how I was expected to figure that out really, but uh, good news is, every time you beat a boss, you get to watch Kenny die in glorious 8-bit visuals. Let's watch, shall we? Perfection. And this happens after every boss, and there's quite a lot of them. You got falling into a giant pile of shit, which is basically a metaphor for my life, and then you got this one which is pretty damn gross. And I thought science was supposed to save lives. And you even got the Grim Reaper himself showing up. Ah yes, short and sweet. But eventually, we make it to school, and look, there's something written on the board. Mr. Hat is a de... A de? What's it there? Oh, I get it. Completely unrelated, by the way, but there's currently a half price sale on Goomba dildos. I, I, I mean, Goomba bobbleheads. Get your Goomba bobbleheads today. Wave them, spin them, shove them up your ass. Heck, you can even buy five of them and have a pretend tea party, you freak. I don't care what you do, but buy them, for God's sake, because I've had these bastards for five years and no one's buying the fuckers. God damn, I put my life savings into these fucking Goomba dildos. I'm broke. I'm ruined, god damn. I knew I should have gone with a Goomba butt plugs. <clears throat> anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, for school. And it's looking pretty rough. I mean, the evil killer plants is kind of expected from a public school, but the giant spikes between the desk, uh, I don't know about that. I feel like that's in breach of at least two health and safety regulations, you know. Maybe even three. And don't even get me started on the hand puppet slinging a revolver. I mean, I've heard of school shootings, but this is taking it to a whole new level. Get it? Because he has a hole in his face. So, uh, as you might have noticed by now, each level has these little items to collect. You got Ike, Wendy, and Mr. Hat. And if you collect them all in a the world, this happens. Yeah, I'm not seeing things right. Stan just vomited his baby brother into Wendy's face. Stan, what did I tell you about eating babies before talking to your crush? Sheesh, talk about amateur hour over here. You're never gonna get the girl if you're spitting babies at them. And spitting miniature versions of said girl like them isn't much better either. In fact, it's a bit weird actually. Yeah, what's all that about? So, after making it through a zombie infested moor and then Stan's house, we eventually make it to the most threatening boss yet, an American police officer with a gun. Ah oh, shit, watch out! Pfft, oh come on, that's totally unrealistic. Kenny's white. Well anyways, uh, the game just keeps going, I'm telling you. This game is absolutely giant. There's probably over 100 levels, and there's so many bosses and references to the show, which somewhat keeps things fresh. I mean, honestly, at this point, the only thing that's keeping me motivated is seeing Kenny die and some of the funny dialogue in the cutscenes, because the gameplay is getting kind of boring now. But eventually, we make it to the final world, the alien UFO, and we get to face the hardest levels yet, such as, uh, Hit a switch and win in 5 seconds. And uh, flick a switch and jump up and win in 10 seconds. And uh, flick a switch and win in 3 seconds. Okay, let's be honest. I think we just gave up in the level design here. This is literally easier than the first level. But eventually, we do make it to the final boss, the Alien Queen. And honestly, it's pretty hard. And like any good final boss, it even has multiple forms and everything. It's shooting balls. It's shaking the ground. And it's dropping... Uh... Whatever those are. Flowers? Uh, I don't really know, but we defeat it by standing next to it and doing nothing. And that's the power of pacifism, everyone. And look, we finally rescue Kenny once and for all and blow up that evil giant meteorite I already forgot about. Oh no, Kenny! Get off the road, Kenny! No. Oh no! He's dead. It was all for nothing. Wait, he's alive again. Oh wait, right. oh never mind, he's dead again. You know what, after like 50 times, the novelty of Kenny dying is kind of is kind of worn off a bit. And that's it, that's South Park on the Game Boy. The game that was never released and no one got to play. Or did they? Because that's not the end of the tale of South Park, oh no. Because in 1999, the game came out, only instead of a mature rated, gory, sweary South Park game made for adults, it was changed to a... May ever be. A cute cartoony game targeted towards little girls. And man, the game is almost identical. 
level design, bosses, it even has those shitty UFO stages. Not really sure why we kept those in, but still. And just when you thought it couldn't get any weirder, the game was then released as a Mary Kate and Ashley game in America. Although at least this time the levels are entirely new and it's a lot easier and shorter, which is probably better, because I doubt the average Mary Kate and Ashley fan is going to want to spend like an hour figuring out that you can break snowballs with your hat or some shit like that. Very weird though, eh? I mean, what was they thinking, turning a cool, mature, edgy cartoon made for adults into a cute, girly piece of shit? Only a complete moron would think that was a good idea. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a pink, magical, sparkly unicorn to attend to. That mane isn't gonna brush itself. See ya, suckers. And the patron of the week is Dr. Dark 7, which, not gonna lie, I wouldn't really want a doctor with such an evil sounding name. I mean, his profile pictures a vampire thing and everything. I'm starting to question if this person's even a qualified doctor at this point. 